Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. PK is a movie I'm talking about. It's been recommended to me. It is, uh, it is a movie that features Amir Khan as the lead, who is one of the leads in one of my favorite films, Three Idiots. Uh, this is an Indian film, as I have been going into and watching and introducing myself to all of these different films from India that I just keep falling in love with. Every single one of them has been amazing. And Three Idiots was has become one of my favorite movies. And the lead of that movie is the lead of this movie, Amir Khan. This movie written and directed by uh, Raj Kum- Rajkumar Hirani. And uh, it's a movie about an alien that comes to Earth and has his remote that he uses to call his spaceship back. He has his remote stolen, and he's trying to find it. He's trying to recover that, and while trying to recover that, he's also learning about humans and Earth and how humans interact and how complex people are this movie in a lot it's a comedy first off uh very much has a third fro- third rock from the sun vibe uh obviously a similar premise third rock from the sun sitcom comedy aliens come to earth to study humans uh this one he wasn't necessarily coming here to study humans necessarily specifically uh but it was a planet that had creatures that were similar to his people And uh, he came here, and the first human interaction he had was somebody stealing his remote, which was a pendant that hung from his neck on a necklace. Uh, He had that stolen, and uh, it was a journey for him to go find it and track it down, and that's what this movie is. Uh, It's also a rom-com. At least part of this movie is a rom-com. The beginning part of this movie is a rom-com, which it seems a lot of... Indian films have that aspect of the movie uh, as as having that rom-com type of uh, a romantic type of storyline infused into it. Uh, This movie, as well as all the other ones that I've watched, is over two hours long. This is a two and a half hour long. But just as all the other movies do, this one more than justifies its runtime. Uh, despite the fact that watching this movie, I wouldn't say that it's as cohesive as the other ones, but by the end of it, every aspect of this movie has a payoff. And one of the things that I was skeptical of was that romantic comedy aspect that's at the beginning of this movie. Because this movie starts, we see Amir Khan's character who is called Tipsy, which PK, I looked up what that means. And PK, not the initials, but that those sounds that you make with your face when you say PK in Hindi, apparent, I think Hindi, uh, translates to being drunk. So somebody had too much to drink, he's PK, right? He's pretty, he's being drunk. In this movie, it's translate, translated to tipsy. Uh, so I, I imagine that if this movie was named or titled uh, it's titled after what they call this alien character. Uh, but in the translated version, they call him Tipsy. Because he's an alien, and he acts really weird, and he kind of acts like maybe he's drunk all the time. PK. Or Tipsy. So this, in, this alien, Tipsy, lands in India, gets his remote stolen from his necklace, and then it cuts to this other character who is living in, uh, I forget where she's living, somewhere in Europe, and she meets this guy, there's the meet cute, where they're both trying to go into this, this uh, play or this, this poetry reading, and they get swindled by this old guy, and it's how they meet, and there's this like little love story that happens. Now, that little love story seems dramatically out of place for the majority of this movie and felt like a, a, an aspect of this movie that could have been cut. However, the end of this movie hinges so much, so much on that initial love story, that initial rom-com 
aspect of, despite the fact that it doesn't really fit in with the rest of this movie it feels like a scene that could have been cut doesn't really have its it doesn't really fit in or be justified with the rest of the movie until the very end and how it hinges on that love story is great how this movie ends justifies everything that happens in such a great way and a big part of this movie is not only like this fish out of water alien trying to understand humans and understand our ways and understand how complex we are and how little we make sense, which is very similar in a lot of ways to Third Rock from the Sun. But he's also trying to find his remote. Nobody's able to help him, but their common advice is to, like, God knows, you know, which is a, a statement that you hear, like, I don't know, God knows, you know, go pray for it. So then he gets on this journey of trying to find God. And then he finds out that there's many different types of gods, many different religions. Each of those religions have different belief structures, different things. Some religions, God loves alcohol. Other religions, he hates alcohol. On some religions, it's insulting to wear your shoes inside of the temple. In other religions, it's insulting to walk in barefoot. Like, there's a lot of different rules in a lot of different types of religions and a lot of different gods. And all of this thing, this movie, in so many ways, is a commentary on the human experience and its use of religion and how and and kind of challenging religion in a lot of ways and directing that challenge to a specific character who is his almighty or his holiness is what he's called and he's kind of almost like this joel olstein kind of guy except for it's for him he's he's a hindu uh like guy I, f I don't know what they call their their head guys not a preacher but he has like a mega church kind of a setup he is a you know swindler as most most religions are set up to collect money from people uh, and to use fear in order to collect money and this movie is such a perfect commentary on that on how these religions are set up to get money and to scare people into following their way of life, their way of existing, their religion, their belief structure is all fear based. And I love it. I love it. It kind of takes a while to get there. The score of this movie is pretty cheesy. Uh, there is a goofy type of almost, you know, like childish kind of score that, that, comes up every time this theme music that comes up uh anytime tipsy is like on to something uh but after a while you warm up to it but other than that it's uh it's it's great it, in so many ways very similar to his character that he played in three idiots where his character in three idiots he was challenging the established way of learning of school and and how ridiculous it is that people don't really go to school to learn or to learn how to learn or get better at learning. They go to school to just memorize facts and regurgitate facts. And his character in so many ways is uh, good at, at helping people think outside of the box, to, to view things from a different perspective and to challenge those common beliefs and common thoughts and in a way that can help, you know, get more out of what you're trying to do. And his character in Three Idiots, it's getting more out of the, the learning, the school experience, the educational experience. And actually valuing education versus valuing being a machine who knows how to memorize and regurgitate facts out of a book. Um, and in the very similar way, his character in this movie is challenging religion and understanding what the purpose of religion is and how powerful religion can be for somebody, but how that is misused in our current societies, which I absolutely love it. I myself, I'm an atheist or an agnostic, you know, I, basically I'm of the opinion that no human knows. We don't know anything 
I don't believe in any religion. I don't think anybody understands it right. And in this movie, it, it there's a point in this movie that I love at the end of this movie that I don't want to spoil right now. I am going to spoil this movie. Uh, it's currently on Netflix, although by the time this comes out, it's only going to be on Netflix for a few more days. I'm sure it'll be back. There's a ton of Indian films on Netflix, and I would imagine, even though it's leaving, eventually it will come back. It's a movie I highly recommend. If, if you want to watch a movie that challenges the, the status quo for organized religions in human culture... Not just India, not just the United States. It is. It is, It doesn't. It it applies to all religions in all countries. It it takes on not only, you know, your casual casual religious people, the 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 economies that are surrounded by and support these these types of religious things, the capitalist kind of uh, infection of religion, but also touches on religious extremism, which is something that. The America is currently suffering from the religious, religious ex- extremists that are not only passing and removing laws and rights away from people, but also encouraging people to go out and slaughter other people because they don't view the same things. They don't view reality. They don't fall in line with their religious beliefs. So if all those things sound interesting to you, And you want to watch a comedy where the character kind of has third rock from the sun vibes. uh, I highly recommend checking it out. And it's a movie that the end of the movie is so good and wraps everything up so well. Like all of these Indian films are so well written where all of the aspects, there's no way, despite the fact that they're all over two and a half hours, they all justify their run times and all come to a beautiful conclusion that makes me love these movies so much. Even if there's aspects of it that I, you know, that are kind of rough, like the score, the soundtrack to Tipsy is a a, a bit cheeseball. Uh, It's still a beautiful thing. Let's take a little break from the Ray Taylor show to promote my live art streams. That's right. I am an artist as well as a podcaster, and I paint live every Thursday at 420 Pacific time. Head on over the best place ever for streaming, youtube.com slash inspired disorder. That's right. Every Thursday at 420, you can watch me paint the many faces. Every week, I paint seven new faces of abstract portraits, ink on paper, and you can watch that happen. You can hang out with me while I listen to a classic episode from one of my favorite podcasts. Head on over to youtube.com slash inspired disorder and check it out. Say hi. Let's hang out. Let's have some fun. And let's paint some faces. Now let's get back to the show. And it like, you know, it's you get to see this guy's journey where he's like he's trying to find answers. He's trying to find his remote. And he's trying to work within the systems of religions. Like he, he believes that these gods will help him. And he, he gets like these false positive responses from it, right? Where he like asks this little statue god that he buys for, for, for help. And somebody thinks he's begging on the side of the street and gives him some food. And he thinks he takes that as God answering his prayer directly. So then he, the next thing is like, oh, I need my remote. Please give me my remote back. And then, of course, it doesn't happen. And he thinks there's something wrong with his statue. And it's just like this false like equivalency type of thing, this, this, like, this placebo effect that happens with a lot of religions where it's like, you know, it, if you, you search for the thing that you believe in and you look for answers that justify your belief rather than taking a critical eye at things and really looking at them of why why is it done that way and one of the things that he he analyzes and critiques is any any it's used in a metaphor in this movie of like the wrong number how all of these preachers and leaders of churches he considers those people to be managers of god like god is the owner of the business 
and all these people are different managers and all these managers have their own way of doing business. And his idea is that all these people are just, they have the wrong, they're, they're communicating with somebody that's not God. They have the wrong number. And he's proving that by their answers to people's problems. And in him pointing that out, it becomes like this viral trend. Because his friend, this girl, who was part of that rom-com at the beginning, she later goes back to India and she becomes a news anchor and she's starting to use him as the, the focus of a news story of how he's seeing these things differently and, and taking everything so riddle, literally and really analyzing and breaking the bullshit down, right? Taking the veil off of the bullshit. And in this wrong number trend, this viral trend that he started starts where people in different religions are, are pointing out how these preachers are giving the wrong solutions to problems. It's beautiful. And it's beautiful how that wrong number analogy, that metaphor, comes back around at the end of this movie. Similarly, how this movie ends with, like, it leads up to this point where he's in this competition. He's in a one-on-one -on -one debate. Not competition, but he's in a one-on-one -on -one debate against his holiness. Right. Because he's pointing out he's affecting their business. People aren't b buying the bullshit anymore. Right. They're realizing that, like, oh, if if God was actually giving you advice, this is the advice he would really be giving you. He wouldn't be telling you to donate more or to go to this other temple to donate or do these things. Like if you're if your spouse is sick, he would say to go spend as much time and give as much love to that person not to donate more and to, to praise him at this other location and to go on these wild goose chases. Like he's starting to call out these things and a lot of religion, religious peoples and different religions are angry at him and his holiness is one of them. And it gets to a point where they're, they're going to have this debate. They're going to have this like confrontation where we're going to see who's right between the two of them. And it, so much of that, it's like building up to this thing where you have tipsy who needs to say a thing that makes it so believable like it, everything is riding on what he says at the end of this movie and the way they wrote it there's this analogy which spoilers again but for those that have seen the movie or for those that don't mind the spoilers he says that like there's two gods. There's the God that made us all. And then there's the God that his holiness made. And that God is made in his image. And that God tells people to do what he wants them to do, which is to give him money and to go on the things that he, and, and to build him up, to build up his ego. And, of course, it's done in a much more eloquent way. It, it's, like, so, so, like, powerful. How, like, people are crying. It's like, oh, of course. It is so true. It is the one thing that, would, that for me, would make me more agnostic, right? That, of course, okay, it's like, there is some being that made everything. There's some intent there. Right. And and to have like a belief in that type of thing. How when you're lonely, you have somebody to talk to. There's somebody watching out for you like there's like to, to give you hope in, in humanity in some ways. Like there's benefits to a God existing. But to follow humans. False creations of these gods in all of these different types of religions, like if there is a God, then there wouldn't be all of these different flavors of religion. I mean, you even look at Christianity. There's so many different flavors of Christianity. And all of those are dependent on what the people in charge want to get out of the people who follow them. They're all 
technologies designed to control humans in some way. Now, the byproduct of that is some people get hope. Some people get that feeling of not being alone, that there's somebody there looking out for them. But they have to then follow these specific rules that were created by men. They have to donate money and give their what they, they have to men who tell them the rules. Where all of that is just bullshit. And that, like, it, it's much simpler. And we should just be there for each other rather than be there for these deities, these fake deities that are man-made. And he even brings up the fact that, like, the, the people that are there that are offended by his message, that are offended by the clarity that he brings people, they, they want to protect what they have. They want to protect this business, these machines that they have of religion. And they want to protect those things so bad that they're willing to fight for them. And in fighting for them, people will die, which we see that everywhere. Religious extremists. In this movie, it's Muslim religious extremists. But it doesn't matter because we see in America, it's Christian religious extremists. You know, with mass shooters, with conservatives, with the, the Supreme Court eliminating rights, with states eliminating rights. All these attacks on marginalized people, on people that don't follow their made up rules, are using the system of American government to punish you, to attack you. And they encourage, they indoctrinate people, these children into defending this this way of life in such a way that they pick up guns and shoot tons of people because they believe that you know what Fox News says you know they believe the propaganda they believe the things that these churches these religious institutions are trying to protect they're trying to protect their machine they're trying to protect their business they're angry that that the money isn't coming in as much as it was and if we force people to do it, then it's going to force people to, to donate and put money into these tax shelters. And I love that. I love that it touches on all of that. I love that it not only attacks all of these, these fake religions, it does it equally, but it doesn't eliminate the idea of a god. It does it in a way that says that there are two ideas there is the idea of the one that actually created everything and then there's the one that's been created in all these different forms that have all these different rules and the confirmation bias that people suffer from because they want to believe so bad this placebo effect of wanting to believe so bad that they will take any, any, anything as a sign of validation. It's, it's like the messaging is powerful. Just as powerful as Three Idiots was about thinking differently and having a passion for education, this movie attacks the way people think about religion, the, the way people think about faith, the way people think about God. But done in like a hilarious way, done through this guy who, think, who seems drunk all the time, a guy who thinks that dancing cars is a great way to get clothing and money. Apparently, people love having sex in cars in India. And when the car's a shaken, that's a good time to go get clothes because you can't just walk around naked. Because, again, religion. <laughs> can't be showing your dick out in public. And you need money because of capitalism. And all of these, most religions rely on money because we live in a capitalist world. We, we built these structures of things, these systems, and we try to fit 
religious belief into those systems, which are all man-made, which are all created by men who strive to have power and desire power in order to control people, to do what they want. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful how this movie wraps everything up so well. And it's beautiful how they use the wrong number thing. Where in order to prove that this, his holiness, his prophecy of this love that this woman had early on, he prophesies that, oh, because she's, she's Hindu and he is uh, Pakistan, he's Muslim, that Muslims are bad and he's going to betray you and he's not going to marry you. Right. Even though they were going to get married. And she ends up getting a letter that says this isn't going to this isn't going to work. But it wasn't signed by him. She never called him to confirm. It was just an assumption because she was given the wrong information from a wrong number. This quote unquote wrong number. This wrong information from this deity that's not actually speaking to God. Right. He's prank calling you. He's giving you misinformation because that is what he wants to happen. And he's trying to manifest that what he wants into reality. And because of that, she assumes that's what's going to happen. And she's looking for. Unknowingly looking for confirmation. That it's true. Even though she doesn't want it to be true. And then when she calls him and then the wrong number, the the way wrong number comes back, it is so perfect. It is so beautiful. Not only how it was used as a metaphor throughout this entire movie, which fits perfectly. But also how it comes back in the literal asset essence, the literal aspect of not having the right number. It's absolutely beautiful so good and just his his critique of of humans of fashion a similar thing to three idiots how wearing the right uniform can get you into certain situations how wearing the right uniform will get you into certain churches like there's certain rules that if you follow you can pretend to fit in and just how ridiculous it is how how we treat people differently based on the costume that they wear let's take a little break from the show to promote the many faces that's right i am also an artist i do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces a new face a new painting gets released every single day over at inspireddisorder.com so head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist Also, there are prints available for select images. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com, buy original art, buy prints if that's your jam, if you want 8x10 prints on high-quality paper. Also, if you're looking to wear some art, there are shirts available with original artwork by myself. Select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form. You go to inspiredisorder.com, you buy original artwork, you buy prints, you buy shirts, you're supporting an artist directly. And if you're the type of person that likes to invest in NFTs, there are also NFTs available for select faces. Go to inspiredisorder.com now. And now let's get back to the show and him calling out basically him calling out the wrong number thing is like shen- he's calling shenanigans right he's like this is fake you're just you're just using fear in order to get money and he the way he proves it setting up like he goes to a school where there's finals are about to happen and all the students going into school are super worried super stressed out right there's so much pressure on them similarly to three edits so much pressure on them to pass these tests and be successful, to go on to have successful careers, that he sets up like this super rudimentary kind of uh, altar of like a rock with red smeared on it. 
and then he puts some like seed money on it to make it seem like oh people are already donating it donating to this altar and saying prayers to it and it's just like because using their fear of of failing their fear of failure and their pressure that they're under to be successful in their finals to be successful in school to go on and make money and all this stuff that religions feed off of that fear in so many ways like same thing with christianity like the only reason you're a good person is because you're afraid of going to hell now donate give me your tithings and the way he points it out is beautiful it's beautiful and the way he like attributes that to be like, listen, if God was real, he wouldn't care about this stuff. He doesn't need your money. If he wanted to, if if he wanted you to believe in a religion, there would only be one religion. There wouldn't be all these different flavors. It's because men create a religion. There's all these different flavors. What kind of control do you want to have over humans? That's the system of religion you build. And why do you, how do you get control? Because people are afraid. You make them afraid. And similarly, how they protect their religions, they make you afraid by attacking with guns and bombs. They remove rights. They threaten you with prison time. They threaten you with fine. They threaten you with legal action. They use fear. Whether you're in India or you're in the United States, religions use fear to control you, to force you to buy into their bullshit. And it's great. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. The fact that it had that little rom-com thing at the beginning, despite the fact that Tipsy is in love with this girl, this woman. And I like how it ends when he comes back and he's bringing more people and he's like giving them all the rules. Like, listen, this is what you got to realize. You got to make sure you're wearing clothes. Hide your remote. The very first human interaction this alien had was somebody stealing from him. And that's like, if you want to encapsulate what it's like, what humanity is like in a capitalist society, it is you're you're going to have things taken from you immediately the first thing is going to have things taken from you child you know it's beautiful everything's beautiful in, in this movie the you know all of it i really did enjoy it um it's uh, you know the 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 message of this movie the point the thesis of this film I absolutely love as somebody. And I used to be religious. I used to be Christian. I used to d identify as Christian. I was very active in churches. And I saw what a business it was. I saw how the church treated people who weren't donating enough. I saw how the church treated people that didn't fit into their, their predefined things. If you were a marginalized person, if you were somebody who had anything other, any kind of sexual preference or anything that wasn't, that fit into their mold of what you should be, you were gotten rid of. You were no longer welcome. I saw how religions treated people and how bullshit it all was, how they were just a business, right? Donate to us or you will go to hell. Is the, it is the business model of, like the church I went to, the churches I went to. Give us your tithings. Show us that you love God or you will go to hell or you're not going to be a good enough Christian. And I saw it was bullshit. I was like, I can't believe in this. And then it's like, oh, there's all these other kinds of religions. Why is this? Why? Why is this one the right one? Oh, it's this, they have different, because there's different, different, you know, just the same reason there's different governments. All these different kind of ways of doing the same thing. Anyway, I absolutely love this movie. 
it's great. Uh, I'm going to be watching. There's more Amir Khan movies. I enjoy him. He's going to be in. There's making. There's going to be a remake of Forrest Gump, an Indian film, obviously, and he's playing the Forrest Gump character, uh, and it looks amazing. I mean, obviously, a lot of things are going to be changed because it's an Indian film, uh, but this guy plays that type of character very well, and he play seemingly. I've only watched two movies that Amir Khan has been in, but it seems like he chooses roles that challenge the status quo, that force you to think outside of the box and think creatively and think differently, and I really appreciate that. So I'm definitely looking forward to the Forrest Gump remake. Offhand, I forget what it's called. It's not called Forrest Gump. But if you want to look at the trailer, just look up Forrest Gump remake India, Amir Khan. It'll show up. Uh, but yeah, uh, looking forward to that as well. And uh, a fan of this guy, uh, very goofy, very goofy, lovable. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I enjoy it. So check it out. It's on Netflix at the moment, but wherever it goes, when it comes back, PK, the letter P, the letter K, or being drunk or tipsy. Anyway, check it out. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.